Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never, hey favour. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And if I've done my editing right, you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description, that this is a collab once again with my beautiful friend, Jessica, who is, of course, stars Hollywood Jessica on YouTube. And today we are combining two rather different palettes. Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade and Urban Decay Electric. Yes, of course, this was my stupid idea. Do you really think Jessica would? suggest combining these two weird palettes together. They're most definitely not what you would consider compatible. So, how will we have done? What does this look like in Glorious Technical? How many times will I waffle on and forget my train of thought? All of these things and many more are answered in this film. So, as has been said, for many, many eons here, and oft copied on less imaginative channels. Uh, but they don't have Sammy the Sloth Straw to say, grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Okay, I am back from the intro. Um, I no doubt will have shown you these in the intro Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette and the Urban Decay Electric Palette. Now, Pretty sure you all know what these look like, but in case you don't, that's the lemonade palette. And that's the electric palette. One of my oldest palettes. But it still works. Now, I was watching my lovely friend Jessica's film where she was doing, I think it was the makeup tag. Where it was like, you know, which palette have you not used for ages, which palette crept up on you, etc, etc. And she mentioned both of these, that she liked them, but hadn't used this one for a while, or this one at all. So I messaged her and I'm like, oi oi girly, we're overdue for a bit of a collab going on. Do you fancy doing something a bit different? And she went, yeah, what you got in mind? You wouldn't normally think to pair these two palettes together. But then, you all know what I'm like. I like to knock things out of left field. I like to do things a little bit different. So our collab is to do a look using these two palettes. See if we can make it work. I have a colour scheme in mind, I don't know if it's going to work, I'm hoping it will, technically it should, practically, we'll see. <laughs> um, this is still a teaching channel, as such, partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I want beginners to keep up with me. When I'm doing the eye look, I zoom right in tight to just my eyes. I don't cut anything out. I do all the blending in real time. Don't speed anything up. The only time I break that rule 
is if I'm doing a cup crease, in which case I'll do one eye in real time and I'll speed the other one up because otherwise the film will be like an hour and a half long. Last time I said that the film was an hour and a half long. Anyway, if I am going too slowly for you, YouTube has speed widgets. They're either up there or down, down, down there somewhere, depending on what particular form of machine, be it phone or laptop or tablet or computer that you might be on. Um, I don't think it works if you stream it through your telly though. But yeah, feel free to speed me up if you feel the need. Uh, as part of the teaching element of the teaching channel, um, I've got deep set eyes. For a long time I thought they were hooded. And I still see a lot of people making that mistake. It was during a pain insomnia moment of researching different eye shapes to give you the best advice possible uh, that I realised my error and now I make a point of inserting a clip where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids because the way that your eyeshadow wears throughout the day is almost identical, hence the confusion. But the workarounds for applying the shadow, very different. So, I'll insert a clip in just a moment. It will be very up close and personal again, just on my eyes where I'll talk you through how to determine which eye type you have and the workaround for each one. Once that's done, I'll be back to start putting some coloured pigments onto my eyelids. So here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So, unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now, she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid 
but you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and we are back. Right, I say we, I am back. Right, now, the only issue I have with this Dominique Cosmetics palette is there are only four mattes. And I know a lot of people don't like using shimmers through their crease, so I try to do mattes as often as possible. But it does restrict me to a setting colour, which you know I don't set this um, eye primer because you don't need to and these three rather warm colours here so I'm going to start off I'm going to go into sweet tea uh, which is the sort of dusky orange and I'm going in with um, just a fluffy blending brush now always hold the brush at the end to put as little pressure on your eye as possible and we're going to do the Viennese waltz of blending rather than the windscreen wiper natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there and reverse turns to come back again we start from the outside because if you do get a sudden blot of pigment it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way and I'm going to start just above my natural crease and start working in. Now the reason that we do the Viennese Waltz Blend is I'm 46, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers who've always been slim that have very mobile lids. And by doing this, we're very gently moving the lid round to make sure we don't get that tiger striping or barcoding effect. I'm just going to gently build this colour up. Remember, it's much better to put thinner layers on and build it up than put a big thick layer on and try to blend it out. So how's your day been so far? Is it a good one? I hope it's been a good one. If it hasn't, well then I hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day and I'm in the shower with you, hi Christopher, um, <laughs> or if you're watching me over your breakfast, or while you're doing your makeup, hi Laura then I hope your day is a good one. <laughs> I 
So, my lovely friend Jessica, I'm going to repeat this look over here. Now the reason that I do, sort of, instead of doing one eye and then going across and doing this eye, is because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them afterwards. But I don't do any of that nonsense, partly because I'm not clever enough to do that nonsense. But also because I want you to be able to see a look that you can actually recreate yourself. I don't want you to feel, oh, why can't I get my look to look like that? Because Photoshop, you know? I always tend to sit back, relax my brows and just check I've got the same shape going on both sides. Just to make sure they match, because sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape on one eye to make them look the same when your eyes are open. So, my lovely friend Jessica. Um, I first discovered her when I first put up, not this year's um, eyeshadow palette collection, but last year's eyeshadow palette collection that I put up. Um, when you upload videos, if you're not a creator you wouldn't know this, you, you add tags to them for different keywords so that, it, that apply to the video. So for example, with this one I'd have Dominique Cosmetics, I'd have Lemonade Palette, I'd have Tutorial, I'd have Collab, I'd have Jessica's channel name, um, I'd have Urban Decay, I'd have Electric Palette. So if anybody searches for, you know, makeup tutorial with Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette, it's going to come up. Or if they just search for Lemonade Palette, hopefully eventually it will get thrown up to them. I'm just cleaning my brush off on a washcloth here because um, colour switches are too harsh, they really are too harsh on the bristles. And then I'm going to go in with a much much more tapered blending brush. I'm going from this sort of size to this sort of size and whatever the size of the head, that's how far it's going to blend it out on your eye. So I'm going to use this much much smaller shorter handle one as well, blending brush and I'm going to go into Mango and I'm going to use this to blend and soften the top edge. Now, if you are blending two colours together, try and put the brush half on the colour you're blending and half off the colour because then when you start blending it together you don't get an obvious demarcation line of where the colour changes. You get a much, much softer blend, which is what I want in this case. I don't want um, an editorial look at the top here. I want it nice and blended and slowly blending from one colour in a gradient to the other colour. So yeah, I was putting my tags up for my um, eyeshadow palette collection and what then happens is for about you know a week or so afterwards films with similar tags will start appearing in your newsfeed alongside people that you follow and Jessica's film came up and it said, I have 1,400 palettes. And I thought, that's got to be a mistype, surely. It's, it's like 400 or 140. No. At the time, she had 1,400 palettes. She's since bought many more and she has done declutters, so I'm not sure what the current figure is. I'm not even sure if Jessica knows what the current figure is, to be honest. But the girl collects makeup. Um, and I was watching her collection and I just, I, the first film that she did, the first, because she split it into about six films I think it was, um, and she didn't show her face in them, all we saw was her hands and heard her voice, and I absolutely fell in love with her personality. So I subscribed to her. 
and then I started chatting to her and before long we were chatting away like we'd known each other for years and then I asked if she wanted to collab and the rest is history really but she she's a really talented woman she really is she's got a lot of strings to her bow she's a qualified makeup artist even though she now works in finance she's a tempin bowler she has a gorgeous dog called Gunwald. Hi Gunwald! Hey! So, yeah, she's just a genuinely all-round lovely woman. Right, now, I am going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to do a cut crease today, I think, because I feel like doing something a little bit different. Um, but instead of using concealer to sculpt it out, I actually got this Gerard Clean Canvas eyeshadow base to see what it's like. Now, the way that I do this is a way that you can work out exactly how where to cut your crease to, even as a beginner. Now this is a acrylic nail brush. It's designed for putting acrylic nails on and doing artwork on false nails. But I love it because it comes down super super thin as you can see. If you're having trouble getting a brush to go that thin, put a little bit of eyelash glue on the back of your hand tap your brush in it and then gently squeeze like that and it should then hold the brush together for you. Now, the easy way to do this and take some of this out of the lid of the Gerard. We start off, I'm going to look in the mirror down here so that hopefully I stay on screen. We start off quite roughly just slapping it onto our mobile lid. Okay? Then we open our eyes, look forward, blink a few times. And what this does is it transfers it up to show you exactly how high you need to actually. Cut your lid to. So you can then spread it across. I'm actually going to do a bit of a one of those at the end of today, I think. Now, you can always take it further than you need, because I always do my base afterwards anyway. So I can clean this up later with some micellar water. Now, I'm going to clean the brush off on the washcloth. And I'm going to very gently pat it. all on the area where I've put the Gerard clean canvas. I do have um, a code with Gerard gives you 30% off, it's BOMBER in all caps, it is affiliated I do earn from it Entirely up to you if you decide to use it or not. There's lots of codes floating around. But you can see by pressing across it like this and then wiping off on the thing, I'm taking off all of the excess of the liquid. It's not setting it because I'm not putting powder on it. 
it's just getting rid of any excess cream that would mix in with the eyeshadow that I'm going to pop on. You can do the same thing with your finger if you want, but I just find that this is more accurate, more precise. You don't lose your nice clean edge. And also, of course, once the salons are back open again, I'm going to have long pointy nails again. Okay. This I do do one eye at a time. So now I'm going to get a lip brush. Comes down to a nice point. I'm going to go into the electric palette. And I'm going to start off with Thrash, which is the. Um, I think it's meant to be yellow, but it is more of a yellowy lime green, as you can see. Put the lid back on my Gerard thing before I knock it everywhere. And then I'm going to start off by gently patting this onto the inner corner of the area that I have just cut. By patting it on initially, you are helping to set the eye primer. It's making sure that the colour is sticking so that you can then just blend a little bit more on top like so. Turn it round to the clean side of the washcloth and clean the yellow off. Now I'm going to go into Savage. I'm savage. Which is Hot pink. <coughs> I'm going to do the same thing, just pat this on. And again, take your time doing this. Makeup isn't a race. So, pop this onto the middle bit. Clean the brush. And then using the very tip of the bristles, lightly drag the yellow or the lighter shade across into the pink. Just to help soften where the two colours meet. Hmm, like that. And then I'm going to finish off with a freak. Which is the green. And as I said, again, just 
just take your time don't worry about going too far out we're going to tidy that up anyway much better to go too far out and then have a nice crisp edge than not go far enough so I'm going to take that way further out than I need to and then again just drag some of the green across onto the pink and the pink across onto the green to blend where the two shadows meet. And then to tidy up, pad with my cellar water on, take it to the corner of my eye and sweep. I don't like using tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from going underneath the edge of it then it's sticky enough to pull your eye around. So I am now going to repeat what I've just done on this eye. I will most likely speed it up and pop some music on. Okay. Depends how long the film is really. But it's going to be exactly the same procedure. Flat brush, pulling up some of the primer from the lid, whacking it on and looking up. This is what I was referring to in the clip that I inserted where I said we have to cut most people with sort of non-hooded and non-deep set eyes can just cut the mobile area like that. We have to cut up onto our upper lid because otherwise it's going to transfer up there anyway.
try something. This may or may not work out. I've got a really tiny artist brush here. I'm just going to go into Revolt, which is the silver. Just want to see if it will. Yeah, it is still bright enough. Good. I'm just going to go. All the way along the edge. Of the cut crease. Just to define it. Yeah, this isn't a makeup brush, it's actually a, an artist's paintbrush. But it's great if you want to do things like this, but you can just use um, a fine liner brush. Or a really, really fine pencil brush, maybe. See how that just finishes that off nicely? And you, you only really get a glimpse of it when I tilt my head back. So you're only going to really get a flash of it every so often. And I like having little hidden surprises like that. You will have noticed with this eye that I actually pulled the lid out when I was doing the silver. At the, the yellow rather, this bit. There's a reason for that. With the super deep creasing, if I don't stretch the lid out, the um, whatever eyeshadow I'm putting on there just collects in the crease. And then throughout the day, start, it's not very neat, is it? Throughout the day, it starts flaking down my face and into my eye. It gets very, very painful. This side moves a lot more than the other one where it got pulled around so much. And I totally forgot that while I was talking to you, which is why that bit's gone a little bit. But it doesn't really notice too much, so that's okay. Right, my lovely ones. I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and other base products on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait for the next time that I press record to talk to you but for you sweetie it's going to be absolutely instant so I will see you well right now really. Hello I am back. Um, I did my soap brows again using the Pink Honey Strawberry Sherbet uh, Honey Glue. Basically, got my spoolie, stuck it in there, swirled it around a bit. Didn't wet the spoolie because they do recommend you wet it. I didn't do that. Brushed through so the brows were sticky. Then went into the lemonade palette and pulled into chai tea this brown and used the other end to just colour in the brows. Now the benefit of doing it like that is that by leaving the soap sticky, the powder has something to stick to and then the powder sets the uh, the stickiness 
and sort of set some for the day really. Right, I'm going to go in with this flat top brush and I think I'm going to go into Fringe which is a gorgeous teal from the electric palette. I'm just going to run that carefully along my lower lash line. Regular viewers will know I can't actually put anything in my waterline. Um, I have very watery eyes anyway, I always have had. Add to that my fibro gives me watery eyes, add to that hay fever. And if I put something in the waterline, honey, it's like Niagara Falls down my face. I'm lucky if I can finish the film, let alone get any photos done or have it last through the day. <laughs> I really wonder what Jessica's done for hers. You know she's going to have blown my look completely out of the water with being, you know, qualified makeup artist and all. Right, I'm going to dip into Slow Burn, which is the orange. And this is the Tarte Graveyard Girl brush. Um, it's flat topped and chunky basically. So it's perfect for getting up under your lashes and just buffing out. But you can use any smudger brush or dense blender to do this. This just happens to be my personal preference. Ooh, that looks nice. By having the teal between the orange and your waterline, it tends to stop that is she got pink eye? Is she not well? Look. So if you want to put a pink or an orange or a red on your lower lash line, if you put a really, really darker or contrasting colour down first, it just helps prevent that kind of, is she okay, look. I have got a new, to me anyway, a highlight to try. This is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago now. This is the Laura Geller Charming Pink Gelato Swirl Illuminator. Sorry, Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminator. And I just wanted to give it a try. I've heard such good things about them. I'm going to pop some of this up under the tail of my brow because apparently along with everything else, ladies and gents, our brows sink as we age. Isn't that wonderful? So popping a little bit of lightness up under the brow, either shimmer or matte, just gives them that lifted, wide awake, illuminated, young, youthful look, apparently. <clears throat> And put some of this on the inner corner and I like to bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it into the shadows that I'd run under the eye. I think it just finishes the eye shape off nicely especially where I can't put anything in my actual waterline. Okay this is quite a sweet, let's see if it's got the cha 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 that I like when I put it onto my cheeks. Right, speaking of to cha to cha cha cha, -cha uh, I'm, go I'm gonna pause you. Yeah, I really am this mad. Uh, pop some of that highlight on, pop some mascara on, choose a lippy, uh, do something with the hair, which is uh, having a mind of itself today. And I'll be back with my finished look once again for you instant. I am back. Okay, so this is my finished look combining these two palettes. 
I used my Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Um, it didn't really have the char 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 until I sprayed my face with some Slay All Day. This is the Dreamsicle one from the Rich Lux. Uh, Busted the house ice cream shack. I've got it next to me here. Um, and it's actually got rich lux on the bottle there. Look. It's weird. I thought the Dreamsicle was going to be my favourite of the two scents. Turns out I prefer the uh, mint chocolate chip one. Who hey, no. Who hey, no. So, um, again, Gerard code for that. All my codes are listed below. They all state whether I earn from them or not. The lippy is actually also a Gerard. Now the reason I put this one on today, I don't use a lot of Gerard today, haven't I? Probably because they've just had that sale on. Um, this is shade share, as in if I could turn back time. Share, spelled the same way. Um, if you are someone who no longer supports a certain controversial booty guru and you happened to love his lipstick shade androgyny hands up that was me I have been searching for a comparable copy not just not a copy but a dupe for it not just in terms of colour, but in terms of formula, as in lightweight, you can top it up through the day without it going pilly and horrible, uh, long wearing, lasts through eating unless you're eating something greasy, non-drying, and I found it, this is it, Gerard Cosmetics Share, and they do a matching lip liner if you're the sort of person that wants lip liner as well so if you are getting close to the bottom of your tube of androgyny and are looking to support somebody other than Monsieur Burning Ball of Gas because that's technically what a star is um, this is the shade to go for uh, as I find more dupes for popular shades of his I will let you know right if you are one of my 4F babies please double check you're still subscribed YouTube are unsubscribing you all and they are leaving you or leaving me in your news feed so it's not obvious you've been unsubscribed nasty people I was going to say a rude word then, but then remember my god kids watch me, so Auntie Angie's going to be good. Once you've done that, a like, a comment, maybe even a share, not the kind of share, but the sharing the film with other people, uh, would be lovely. Uh, if you could see your way to do that. Let me know if you had collabed with me using these two palettes which colours would you have been drawn to? Would you have done a cut crease? How would you have done your look? Because they're not obvious palettes to combine but I actually think this looks quite good. I can't wait to see what Jessica's done sure it's going to be absolutely amazing speaking of which once you've let me know what colors you would use and done all the like and the share and everything pop over and check out Jessica's film and uh, let her know you're there from 4F Beauty and show her the same kind of YouTuber love that you always show me I'm sure most of you will know her already anyway because we have collabed quite a few times now if you are here from Jessica's channel or you stumbled over me by some complete coincidence Hi, hello, welcome, I hope you didn't hurt yourself when you fell 
uh, we would be absolutely delighted to welcome you to the 4F family and let's face it if you've made it this far through the film there must have been something you were enjoying even if it was just me blethering on at you in what I'm told is a calm and soothing voice it's super easy to join the crew all you need to do is hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications, and yes, and all notifications. And you keep repeating that until YouTube stops sending pop-up windows asking you the same damn question 16 different ways here from Sunday. Hopefully you will get told about my films going up, uh, but I can't guarantee it. My husband is subscribed to me and even he doesn't get told all of my films. He got notified this morning for a film that I put up a month ago. Helpful. Uh, but I do have an awful lot of other films that you can watch. There are a lot of different playlists. Um, I've got a collabs playlist. Uh, I've got a makeup tutorial, product review, challenges tags I even read you my favourite poem so there's going to be something that will interest you so if you're looking for a little bit of me time basically grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up pick a playlist and indulge but maybe not the relax and sleep unless you're an insomniac who needs to sleep because uh, I've been told that my talking you to sleep film works ridiculously well. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.